Okay, we are currently revving the engines going online. This one's a bit more interesting to look at. Let's start here. And green lights are on. Uh, good afternoon, Facebook and YouTube and video on demand viewers. Uh, we're sitting down today to put an hour into working on our Colossal Crab map token combo and our to be named Crab Arena battle map. These colors, I think, are going to change a lot before the end of today. Hmm, so uh, without further ado, let's just jump in. So my main goal is to transplant these colors into this map. Uh, the purpose of our crab on the right hand side here is to camouflage in this battle map. So that's that's where we'll start. Um, we'll start by kind of finalizing this color scheme so that we can finalize this color scheme. And I'm pretty happy with this guy actually. He's got no Photoshop adjustment layers, which is good. Um, makes makes it a very easy transplant so i can pretty much just grab him and do what i said transplant him over uh let's let's do that looks like a few people are tuning in hello everyone sitting down to do an hour of drawing today before i move on to my other work for today, but I'm trying to stick to one hour minimum drawing per day. Yeah, so that's what we're here for. Okay, this needs to be like 50% scale, I think. So we're working in Photoshop on some good old battle maps. Uh, kind of our July projects. All right, so this is 10 by 10. So this needs to be roughly 10 by 10. I feel like the scale's all off. No, that's about as big as he is. Okay. Interesting. You know what I want to do actually is transfer him again, but slightly more complex. Okay, we'll come back to that because I just decided I want to transfer his crab form as well. Just for funsies. Interesting, we've got uh, the line arts doing some wonky stuff there. We'll come back to that. Yeah, this isn't, isn't the final scale for our crab. He's going to be about half that size. Hello, Herpenderper. Yeah, I'm trying to stream um, stream to YouTube at least a little bit every day, with exception of the days where I get to play D&D &D or 
spend time with family or other things normal people call days off. Uh, thanks, Will Cipher. Me too. It was this color composition was kind of an accident, but it was a very happy accident. And welcome back, Flow State. Hello, hello. Uh, I've just realized my chat was hidden and from me until right now, so I can now see the chat while I'm painting. I'm a professional. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe this will be 50% scale. Oh, his shadow, his shadow didn't transfer? No, he's got no shadow. All right, we'll, we'll call the start time now. It's 2.30 p.m. where I am. And we'll say we're starting now. And I'm going to work work on this until 3.30, and then i got other stuff. Uh, you can call me Ross. Yeah. That's my name. I should have put that somewhere in the description. I usually do. And let me let me put it down there. And a little bit of stream doctoring. Yeah, I I draw every day. I I take one day off to play D and D every week, and then I don't bother doing anything else that day because it's pretty exhausting, actually. That's the big old day off, and then plenty of relaxing around the day. Okay, is this is this the correct scale? It is, right? Because it was roughly 10 by 10. And if I'm going by DPI, yeah, yeah. So this is our eventual scale. So this big crab yeah, is designed to camouflage right around there. We got a little bit of doctoring to do before that actually happens. I'm thinking we might get rid of some of these fringe stones. We're going to have to thicken up the line out a bit so that it matches these ones. And then obviously, like, color match everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah, my, my first name's Ross, so I'm a little different to Bob Ross, but... I will welcome the comparison. Yeah, I think we'll get rid of these rocks. We'll keep those ones. And we'll get rid of that one. Because this one's kind of out of place. Uh, how should I go about it? I think I'll make some edits here. And then just copy it over to this uh, permanent canvas. Yeah, yeah, Will, we're going to do that very shortly. So I want to match the thickness of the line art first so that it all looks like it's like he's supposed to be here. And then we're going to take the cool colorations we experimented with in our crab and introduce that into the map. So we'll add some oxidized red to these rocks. But he's already looking pretty at home, isn't he? Maybe if it doesn't work out, maybe what we'll do is extract the red out of this version so that this version can camouflage. But when he stands up, he's got the, the red highlights, and that just helps him kind of pop out of the map. Uh, 
Where should we put him? He can, he can look longingly over the ocean while we work on the rest of the map. Here we go, friend. Uh, how about uh, right there, right there. Okay. So what was I saying? First of all, I want. We'll call this um, final mask. And I suppose it's time to bust out the drawing tablet. Yeah, we definitely want him to pop out somehow. So maybe the red will do that job, or maybe we'll think of something else. Usually we give our tokens these, I call them sticker outlines, because they look like stickers to me. And that definitely helps them pop. But a quote-unquote token his size? I'm not sure whether or not that would work. I think it might work quite well. Or we just give him a much darker shadow. That could also do the trick. How's my camera? Pretty good. Let me move that here. <clears throat> yeah, so apologies to my past self, but I'm going to erase some of the work I've done. All for the good of the final piece. Yeah, so I got rid of that one and these and the rest, the rest pretty much blend in. Yeah, okay, cool. Next. I'm going to duplicate his line art layer. And then I'm going to experiment with expanding it. I think I could probably just get away with doing this. And then playing around with capacity a little bit. You can see, like, the issue we obviously have is that the line art is much finer on camouflage crab compared to these rocks. So we're there's some work to be done, but we're I'm trying to match them. Match them up. Thanks. You won't be able to see it, but I'm currently tweaking some smart sharpen settings to see if we can't help that way. Then what we can do is put separate mask on top of this one. And what I can do now is play around with adding and subtracting this extra layer of thick lines. So we don't have to have thick lines everywhere. We can mix and match. Because in our reference image, we've got really thick lines, and then we've got not so thick lines. Oh, Will, I'd love to see that. I'm getting really into miniature figurine painting myself. I haven't done it myself. I'm just watching people do it on YouTube. But yeah, I, I find it fascinating. So I definitely want to see that when it's done. That one's gone. Let's let's get rid of that. Did we keep that one? I don't, I don't want to keep that one. Uh, I just had a thought. We're working at half scale 
on this map when we're editing our crabs. So really I should be doing this stuff over here. Yeah. Here's what we'll do. Take a copy of this whole thing. Um, flatten. Where's the flatten button? And then what we'll do is we'll work over here when we're editing our crab. That's much smarter. And this has to be at 200%. Okay, so he sits right about there, and now we'll work in here. Um, these are, yeah, you can call them sinkholes. They're, we call them blowholes here. So the water of the ocean kind of rushes in, hits the cliff face that's underneath here, and then sprays up out of the holes like a geyser. So our crab likes to hang out here because there's a whole bunch of seaweed and fish and stuff get washed up, and he just munches on that all day. Doesn't have to do much work. That's, that's the concept behind the map. I really like this kind of diorama here now. He's got his little clone over here. Uh, anyway, so, line art. At this rate, I'm not going to get very much done today. All this the thickening. And we want it to be just a tad thicker. Okay. Evening guiding Olive. Yeah, we are. We're back working on the crap. So, don't want any of this edited. Although it does look pretty cool with the thick lines. Doesn't he? It does help him stand out. Maybe I'll keep that. I can always turn it off later, so let's keep it. Now, I'm also curious, just while we're here, what he would look like with a sticker border. Let's ignore these bits. Maybe twice that amount. If we give him one of these borders, that definitely helps him stand out, right? Maybe we'll have two versions. This is kind of useful. Useful, right? If you are a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. I'll decide later. We'll keep it there for deciding later. Anyway. I need to, I need to focus. What were we doing working on this? Actually, I think this is pretty much minimum width perhaps. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to be a little daring with my layers here. And we're just going to separate the line art between these two forms because I want to do stuff with this line art and I don't want to affect this line art. And I think our barnacles are going to follow the camouflage line art pattern. Okay, they're separated. Oh, 
Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So these two line styles is what I'm trying to match. Not precisely, but we'll do our best. It's probably a little something like that. It'll be viewed at about this sort of scale. So yeah, we're doing well enough. Whoops. Hmm. Oh, it could be a w underwater map, yeah. I've already handed this map off to Rudyful, who's making a bunch of map variants. He's gonna do just she's just gonna follow where her heart takes her. But maybe one of those will be underwater. We'll see. So I'm actually making these even thicker. Did that do the trick? Did that do anything? Hmm. Oh, I'm working in the wrong layer altogether. <laughs> I'm working in my layer group for our crab on the left and wondering why nothing's happening on the right. Oh boy, okay, let's backtrack. Okay. No further, please. Okay, that should do. Yep. And now let's do everything I just did, but on the correct layer. Mm, not like that. Okay, now I should be able to use my brush to brush in some thick lines and try and follow kind of the rules that I was playing with on the map, which is major edges get a nice thick line. Is this thick enough, I wonder? Just mixing in some.
Obviously, there's just a higher level of detail on the crap. We're never going to be able to hide him here perfectly, but we just want to give the players the opportunity to suspend their disbelief. And I think this will do the trick. Hmm. Right. Now, I don't know if the seaweed on his mantle is finalized yet, or if I want it to be a little less saturated. But I'd kind of like to decide now so that I can finalize this map. I think we'll go with this and see what it looks like. All right, so first things first, let's just save what we did here. Because our camouflage guy is pretty much ready to go. Save. And over here, we want to introduce the rustic red, rusty red, to our volcanic rocks. And I suppose we'll also steal the coloration of this seaweed. See what that looks like. We'll come back to this. I've got a bit of a haze layer here, which you can see. I'm just going to disable it for now. <clears throat> okay, I also want to simplify our crab so that when I save this, it's not a bloated file size. So just crunch down some layers. That'll do. Okay, so our crab just has black line art. No, he's also got blue-ish line art, so we'll use a bit of that. Gotta be a multiply layer. We might come back to a black line art if it looks better. That'll do. I'd also like to tidy this up a bit. I can see we've got 16 viewers. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by. Always curious to know where you're tuning in from because 3 p.m. here translates to, you know, ungodly hours in the US of A. I 
I can just get away with the color picker. Just grab these colors and transfer them over. Although they're pretty close already. And we don't want them to be precisely the same. That's not right. Almost midnight, 2 a.m. Yeah, I thought so. This is a pretty late stream in my world. I usually try and get it done earlier in the day, but I did my study first today instead of the work. So here we are. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, not bad. Let's file that idea away for later. It's like, um, looks like he's made of glass. Glass crab. I have a zone in my own homebrew world where all the creatures are made of glass. So <laughs> I have to keep this handy. Especially glass guillotine. That sounds fun. And his surface texture kind of looks like glass. Perfect. Ooh, stone golem with these colors. Yeah. In my mind, these colors are like iron and it's kind of oxidizing a bit of rust. Um, yeah, that's the idea. Ah, you know why this is so dark? It's because I have adjustment layers sneaking in. So I got to rip all these out. Hmm. Yeah, an obsidian crab. Obsidian would be another good um, candidate for a guillotine. Now here's the thing, he's got highlights which aren't present on the map, so we've got to brighten up the general color a little bit. Somewhere around there. And we do have highlights over here. gonna look like we're taking 10 steps backwards before this map gets anywhere but that's because I had a very temporary but decent color scheme before and now we're taking 10 steps back in order to try and find a permanent color scheme that we like so this is kind of what he looks like with his colors in the seaweed That's the problem. Interesting. I might desaturate all this seaweed. Oh, yeah. So that was my phone buzzing. You probably didn't hear it. And I've set my phone to buzz every half hour to remind us all to get up and stretch our legs and stretch our necks and otherwise be healthy. So I'll be right back in 20 seconds.
All right, I'm back. It's also handy because when I sit down again, I kind of see the, the art piece with a new perspective. So. I want to see if I can do something a little bit cheeky and just grab his oxidization color and use it in my uh, stone model layer. That might do the trick. If I can find it. Mm, not very good, is it? Yeah, I used to, Will. Um, but actually, for the reason... The same reason I just got up to stretch my neck is why I got rid of that tablet and I switched to this one uh, to take better care of my neck. With this one, I can hold my body in a much more ergonomic position while I draw, whereas if I'm working on a screen, it's a lot more difficult to get into a position that's good for my body. Uh, I switched to this one and it, it works better for me, but it might be different for other people. Kind of cool, kind of cool. It works better with this coloration than this coloration. Maybe we should switch up the layer style, like a screen of some kind. Yeah. Hey, Arno. I've definitely used more screen tablet than this kind of tablet in my days. But this one's much more affordable. That's why I recommend this. This one I picked up for like a hundred bucks. I think overlay is the way to go. Let's play around with this because I've got a few layers which we can do funky stuff with. <clears throat> and I do want to try again changing what's currently water into sand. Uh, where did I put that? Yeah. Originally, the idea was that this um, material is supposed to be beach sand. And I'm also not sure if I'm even going to stick with this overcast kind of color scheme or if we'll, go to, if we'll do something brighter, more tropical. Let's, let's try that for a bit. Let's take it for a spin. A bit more tropical. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, the ones with screens are useful as a second monitor, and that's something I could use right about now. See, this is the original concept, like a tropical location, volcanic terrain, but otherwise nice, vibrant sand and tropical waters. And then we'll have a nighttime version, which will be much more grim and might double as the overcast one. So let's play around with this now. 
We'll be playing around for another 25 minutes. And that's, that's a good amount of time to figure out a color scheme. In fact, I'm going to save this as a duplicate so that we can always go back to overcast if we want to. I'm better at drawing beach scenes in the summertime because I spend more time there. Um, I'm like searching my mind for the proper color right now and it's a little bit buried back there. That's kind of why the first version was overcast because that's what I'm used to currently. It's, it is the rainy season in my part of the world. Kind of want to channel like Sea of Thieves right now. <clears throat> Let's see if we can do that. But I like this look. This is pretty good. We just need to mix in these blue shadows that he's using. Um, we can do that somewhere. Yeah. No. Let me introduce some blue line art to this. Not sure why that disappeared. Let me grab that again. Yeah, okay, maybe I turned it off on purpose. Yeah, I need to be mindful of this highlight color. That's gonna kind of um, do what I balance this stone surface with. Not quite this bright, but somewhere closer to that. Yeah, something like that. I'm liking where this is going. <laughs> have a lot more layers to play with in our sand. We have a whole rendering watercolor layer. And I believe this is just some gradient stuff. Like that. I suppose this sand's pretty darn wet if uh, these geysers are going off every six seconds. You know what?
Hey, it's James Simon. Welcome back. We're working on our crab's home this stream. Just a short stream, but making good progress. That feels about right. One one trick I suppose I can use is to desaturate it and look at the kind of color levels. Like I was feeling like the sand was too bright. And when I do this, I can see the sand is indeed glowing. And maybe it should be something more like that. But I do want, I do want to simulate that kind of blinding white sand look that I've seen in the real world. Ah, I do have a sheen layer. I can use this. This was for the water when it was water and not sand, but we can totally use it. This sort of sand reflects sunlight just about as well as the water does. Surf geysers, yeah, that's a good word for it. I've been calling them blowholes since that's kind of the nickname for them in my part of the world. But yeah, that's what they're intended as. Um, mm, mm, mm. I don't think I've ever seen a rainbow glass beach. Let's have a look. <clears throat> wow. Very beautiful. Uh, I seem to think at the scale we're working with here, that would just be brown, unfortunately, but maybe you could put some twinkles in, different color twinkles. Very interesting. And the sand gave me so much trouble last time and it's not cooperating this time either. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. I will keep tweaking until we find it. Thor's Well, oh, that's a sick name. I wonder if this place has a name for the locals, seeing as there's so many blowholes here. Ah, yeah, this will help. So if the shadows are more pink, then we can push the base color more yellow. This is, this is starting to feel familiar. I think we need to push this red a little bit deeper. In fact, I might duplicate it and do something a bit daring, where if I mask this layer off, I can kind of color it back in if I can find the right brush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point, Eric. Yeah, the, the glass, rainbow glass beaches, they're very similar to the idea of my glassy zone in my homebrew. It's inspired by a short story by C.S. Lewis, the guy who wrote the Narnia series. He's got this short story where... Um, there's a big, there's a land and it's kind of like a heaven analog, but in this realm, all the terrain is like sharp, like glass. So the grass 
bend, it bends and sways like gla like grass. Gosh, that's a confusing mixture of words. But when you step on this grass, it doesn't yield to your feet. It's just like glassy grass. So I just I stole that idea and I said I'm going to make it literal glass in my world. Yeah, I think this is kind of doing the trick. So, yeah, the uh, the glass zone in my world isn't broken glass. It's just a landscape that has been turned into glass by magic. And if you're going to adventure there, you need special shoes and a special breathing apparatus so that you don't breathe in the glass particles. Oh, big deal. I have a shadow layer for this too. I'm starting to feel like he's camouflaging, right? Maybe this stone needs to be a bit more like this stone. Yeah, it's very painful. Very, very painful. Nothing lives there except for dragons and glass fauna. So there's there's some stuff when the great cataclysm happened, it wasn't just killed outright, it turned into a big glass creature with a mind to it. So one of the few things my party did face there was a golem made of glass. It was a good time. And glass samurai who roam the glass wastes, uh, protecting their ancestral home from looters because other folk go and try and loot the towns and cities which used to exist there which have been turned into glass so you can find like little birds which have been turned into glass and now they make for perfect little ornaments or you can find dead people who have been turned into glass and turn them into very grim ornaments so the kind of the people who consider those lands their ancestral home, they, they still stay there and they protect it from these looters. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this layer. I just want it just a tad darker, not totally bluish. Mm, it's too green. Okay, I, I do prefer this color scheme. Where did we start? We started with an overcast, very, very drizzly color scheme. This, this may become a map variant, but I rather prefer this one. Maybe because it's winter here and I want to draw something that looks warm. But this one's my personal preference. Hmm. Now these blowholes we've been talking about so much, something about them bothers me and it's this layer. I think there needs to be just a little bit of uh, like a lip of light on one side. Yeah, that's a little bit more three-dimensional. 
I think maybe our shadow color here is just a bit muddy. It's not really working. <laughs> Mixing this red in with the blue is a very muddy combination. So we got to be careful not to muddy the whole thing. Um, that's the one. Okay, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, James, you and I think alike. Uh, in his work in progress stat block, he has a special move where if too many people climb onto his back, he's going to deliberately sit himself on a blowhole and be jettisoned into the air and do a couple flips to shake him off and potentially body slam someone, which I'm sure will be a TPK waiting to happen. Um, there's another one. Where is it? Yeah. This color's unpleasant. You know why? It's because we've got just a general shadow going all the way around. There's no... doesn't make sense for the sunlight, which is kind of in my mind coming from the upper left. All I need to do is throw my pen across the table. That's a good start. All I need to do... is transform my layers a little bit. Then what I can do is on one side, I can put a glow rather than a shadow. Using this guy's glow, that's the perfect color right there. Okay, so now we just color this in. And we enjoy the third dimension kind of appear slowly. I'm staying away from making shadows too obvious. Um, directional shadows, that is, because I want our crab to look... You can see he's got kind of an overhead light source for his undershadow, and he's kind of got a right-to-left light source for the rest of him. We might have to play with that some more. Like... um just tone down his directional shadow. That layer. Something a bit more like that. Oh, that's a cool encounter idea, yeah. 
Like I love mixing um, challenges into the battle map that don't involve just smashing the creatures. So that's a good way to do it. Maybe we'll have some boulder assets and they can push the boulders into the blowholes. Create one super blowhole and then, like you said, use that to flip him over. That's a, that's a, that's a solid encounter right there. Okay, I'm in the home stretch. Uh, there's another five minutes to go. And I just want to make a few last minute changes. That's about right. I definitely don't like this fuzzy stuff here. Let's fix that up. Yeah, please do, Will. Aha, uh -huh. I see a problem. So we use the same ledge layer in here. And what we really want is a darker color on the ledges here. Something more like here. <clears throat> I like the progress we've made today. It's starting to feel like a map I could get immersed in. Like when I zoom in here, I can, it feels right. It's getting there. Not quite there. Oops. And I'm still wondering whether I want just very bold line art or if we want this secondary layer. Still undecided. I'm tending towards bold line art because this kind of looks a little bit barren without it. That's much more interesting. Okay, I've changed it a little bit more purple, uh, pink, and that, that looks cool. This is just some fantasy stone at this point. It's uh, not modeling any of the stone I was originally thinking of. That's all right. Hashtag fantasy battle apps. Um, he does look like he's starting to blend in color-wise. Uh, this version here isn't the final version where we've adjusted the line art and whatnot. We definitely need to transplant this sand color onto him. Maybe I can do that now. Oops. Yes, in theory, this version, which is a bit further along, will blend in here. 
well enough. Yeah, James, that came to mind as I was drawing it. I know, I know the hexagonal stone you're talking about, and you're definitely very welcome to describe it to your players that way. The original inspiration for this is um, kind of different volcanic stone that I get near where I live, but it could be either. Absolutely. Okay, this is this is a good point for me to end off because I'm at the point where it looks just about right. But it still looks a tad unfinished. But I need to step away from it for a while before I can tell in what way it's unfinished. Which is perfect because I was about to take off anyway. Let's hide our crab. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> Basalt columns, yes, that's it. I'm thinking highlights on this stone. That's what we need. Maybe some highlights into these defined stones. Maybe we'll come and just do a big pass of highlights next time. I think I can get rid of the uh, sea spray layer. We can always bring it back later. Hmm. I can toggle this just to kind of increase the contrast. That's pretty cool. Seaweed's looking pretty good. Sand, I'm kind of happy with where the sand's at. At long last. Low holes. Maybe they need some deeper shadows. Where are my shadows for them? In the ledge layer. So maybe these shadows need to be a bit deeper. Um, well, at this point in time, I don't have much of a schedule. Um, my day revolves around drawing and studying, and depending on the day, I'll either draw first or study first. So it could be Aussie afternoon or it could be Aussie after, uh, morning, but I don't really have a set schedule. I'm just kind of on when I'm on. Yeah, maybe this could be... Uh, I don't want to push that too dark because that's what our crab is camouflaging with. Here's kind of the... I know it's finished when I can zoom in to token level and move him around and it feels finished. At this point, I'm thinking it feels not finished. Like, I think the sand is wrong after all. And I shouldn't be too afraid of editing the stone color because I can always edit our crab to match the stone rather than the stone to match the crab. And sometimes I play with these dials, brightness and contrast and stuff as a final step. Uh, I'm also mindful that it's just very gray, but maybe, maybe that's okay. 
it's not that gray, is it? It's a definitely gray stone, but we've mixed in a whole lot of color with our seaweed and our whatever the red stuff is, oxidization. In the in the play test, our poor paladin ended up down one of these blowholes not once but twice. From a critical fail on mounting the crab, we rolled a d8 to figure out which way he fell off, and mm. the dice decided it was straight into a blowhole. And then he also critical failed his last gramp last chance test to not fall down the blowhole. Um, so yeah, it was bad days for our paladin. The sea is a bit too bright. Yeah, yeah, Chris, I, I think I had that thought just as I was reading your comment, but the sea needs to be darker. <laughs> Unfortunately, he, we don't own enough dice to send them to dice jail. So we're stuck with the, the cursed dice. Maybe, maybe a dark sea isn't what I want. We're in between. Let me just import one of my old water textures. Not not as a final, but just to grab some of these colors. Because these ones are kind of nice. Yeah, we're already pretty close. I just shouldn't be too afraid of the green color. If I want, I could do something like that, but I usually try and stay away from using these patterns. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, though. I do like the detail it introduces right next to the froth. Now we play in person mostly, but when I'm overseas, we'll play on Roll20, or well, we're actually transferring over to Fantasy Grounds lately. Yeah, this is this has definitely added something to it. We'll keep that. But yeah, I think we're succeeding at the tropical feel. We just need some highlights on the rock faces. Especially because they're supposed to be wet, right? They're supposed to be soaked through by these blowholes every few seconds. Now we definitely need some highlights. Um, also feeling like the seaweed is a little bit yucky right now. Hmm. Okay, dokie. I uh, keep forgetting that I have plenty else to do today, so I better take off. But we've had a lot of fun and we made a lot of progress on uh, to be named Crab Arena battle map and the crab himself. Yeah, these are fun. I love looking at this guy. I'm not not sold yet whether or not we'll keep the 
extra thick lines. Where did I put those? This. I'll probably remove it in the final version. Just so he's more consistent with the tokens. Can, of course, darken these lines as well. There's a few options, but we'll explore more in the next stream. Uh, it was, it has been fun. Thanks everyone for tuning in, keeping me company, helping me come up with some cool ideas and giving me a great excuse to talk to myself. So hitting the save button on these and yeah, signing off. Thanks again. And I'll be back tomorrow, question mark? Maybe. Tomorrow's 50-50. We'll see. I'll be back soon enough, though. So, goodbye. Have a good one.